Silver Dollar City is one of the best theme parks in the entire world. The crown jewel of the Hershen chain, this 1880s theme park features a unique atmosphere and an elite lineup of attractions. This includes seven roller coasters, great water rides, a few flat rides, and so much more. This park is worthy of a countdown on its own. But since Silver Dollar City is located in the heart of the Ozark Mountains in Branson, Missouri, I thought it would be interesting to include some of the other rides around town. I have not been to any of the water parks in Branson, nor have I been to any of the go-kart tracks, but I have ridden all the town's mountain coasters and also visited Bigfoot Adventure Park. So let's count down the top 20 rides and attractions I've experienced at both Silver Dollar City and the surrounding Branson area. And unless otherwise noted, the rides are located at Silver Dollar City just to avoid redundancy. Number 20. A Christmas Carol Silver Dollar City has some of the best shows of any theme park. This is a lengthy, well-done 45-minute rendition of Charles Dickens' holiday classic. This is the best on-stage version I've seen. Number 19. Rudolph's Holly Jolly Christmas Parade This lively Christmas parade proceeds past the Christmas tree and then goes down Hugo's Hill. The parade may not be super long, but the floats are bright and colorful. The staff members are super excited and lively, and the music is spectacular. The whole experience is just so loud and cheerful. Number 18, The Giant Barn Swing. This SNS Scream and Swing has the usually short cycle, but the 3 to 4 max swings give decent floater airtime. And this one also has some great visuals as you swing through the barn, and you also get to overlook the hill. Number 17, Firefall. This SNS double shot extends out of the park's fire station. While the ride doesn't have the strongest launch, and the views are limited by the building and its placement at the bottom of the hill, the two ascents up the tower give brief but very strong pops of ejector airtime. Number 16, the Frisco Silver Dollar Line Steam Train. This classic train rides great for several reasons. One, it's a genuine steam engine. Two, it travels out into the woods. Three, it offers the best views of Outlaw Run, if you get lucky. Four, there's a show scene halfway through the ride. During the main season, you get a comical holdup. During the winter, you get a chilling nativity scene. Number 15, Thunderation. This Arrow Mine Train, like every roller coaster in Branson, is built on a hill and the ride uses that placement to its advantage. You start atop the hill and rumble down the hillside continuously picking up speed. The Helix has decent G's and the ride has an incredible sense of speed on the bottom turns. And I like how there's one final drop after the lift hill so you at least finish with a bang. The one downside with this coaster is that it can be bumpy. Number 14, Home for Christmas. This was basically a Christmas sing-along, but it had all the classic songs, plus a few originals. The vocals and choreography were top-notch. Number 13, the Copperhead Mountain Coaster at Shepherd's Adventure Park. The newest of the three mountain coasters in Branson is also the weakest. This vegan one had a pretty bad case of auto braking, and it failed to offer any airtime. On the bright side, it offered stunning views of the mountains in two parts when the horizon opened up, and a few of the turns offer solid laterals. Number 12, Flooded Mine. This boat ride tells the story of inmates trying to escape a mine that's flooded. It's a pretty dark story for a family park, and while the figures are a bit dated, I like how big and expansive the scenes are. They're quite busy, and this is a shooter so you can fire at targets throughout the experience. None of the targets really react though, and the trigger is pretty stiff, so your finger gets quite the workout. Number 11, the Branson Coaster at Branson Sawmill. This vegan mountain coaster starts atop the hill. This hill may be shorter than the other ones, but you also get to travel down the hillside twice on two different unique runs, so it makes up for it. The first half was just okay, but the second half was much faster. It was a steep slalom down the hill with little auto braking, some laterals, and even a pop of airtime. Up next would have been the Lost River of the Ozarks. Silver Dollar City's old River Rapids ride was quite the soaker. There were seven or eight massive rapids that would absolutely drench you. The ride was very well landscaped too. Number 10, American Plunge. This is an underrated log flume. One of the rare ones built by Bar Engineering, this ride features a long dark tunnel and a scenic course through the woods. 
You also have a squirting frog and a waterfall on your route for variety. And the ride finishes with a great final plunge. It's quite tall for a flume at 50 feet or 15 meters, and the drop is steep enough to even give a little pop of airtime. And that splash will absolutely soak you. Number 9, Fire in the Hole. This hybrid dark ride and roller coaster features a well-themed journey past a burning town. The sets are dated, but I like their size and detail. And then the ride culminates in three drops that can actually give some shocking airtime if you're in that back car. It definitely caught me off guard. Number 8, Wildfire. This B&M sit-down features a fantastic first drop loaded with floater airtime. It's more reminiscent of a B&M Hyper. The ride is very smooth and the views are marvelous, but the inversions don't pack the same punch as other B&Ms. They only offered mild force and whip. Number 7, Marvel Cave. This scenic cave tours one to one and a half hours long, and it's such a unique experience to get at a theme park. This cave is massive, and it's a beauty. And the tour guides do an amazing job keeping the tour engaging, telling all sorts of stories on the way. The regular tours are free, but I recommend splurging for the lantern tour. It's an upcharge, but experiencing the cave with less lights is an eerie experience. Plus, you see an extra room or two. Now, I suspect next is where Mystic River Falls would place. I saw this ride testing in 2020, but I missed it by a week. This looked like SeaWorld Orlando's Infinity Falls with a well-landscaped course filled with soaking rapids and an exciting final plunge. Number 6, Gravity Bomb at Bigfoot Fun Park. This is a great drop tower. You have just a seatbelt so you're very exposed. The views of the Ozarks are stunning. And there's some audio at the top but I'm torn on this. On one hand, it's cool for your first ride. On the other hand, it spoils the moment when you drop. The drop is still intense, giving a decent stomach drop on the way down, but it would be even more effective if you couldn't anticipate it. Number five, Super Sling at Bigfoot Fun Park. This saddle sling features a super exposed ride vehicle, and I had the fortune of riding one with an operator who knew how to get this thing flipping like crazy. Once we hit the apex, we would flip non-stop. It was fast and forceful while offering stunning visuals as you plunge back towards the ground. And then you get strong paws of G's at the bottom, which are absolutely insane if you're still inverted for this part. The initial launch itself has no warning, and it produces a nice rush in the ascent, but the flips are what make this ride. Number 4. Runaway at Branson Mountain Adventure Park. This is easily the best mountain coaster in Branson. Built by Aquatic, this one is easily the tallest and it features the most downhill track. There are several little dips giving quick pops of airtime, and then this one also has great laterals, particularly on the helixes and the wild swooping drop roughly two thirds of the way through the ride. This one is a little bumpier than the others, but the elements and setting are so strong that I can look past that. And this one is incredible at night. The rainbow track looks cool, and there isn't enough light to spoil the layout. Number 3, Powder Keg. This underrated SNS launch coaster features an intense compressed air launch at the start. This launch feels just a step below the intimate hydraulic launches in terms of power. You really get yanked down that launch track. The first three hills deliver nice sustained floater airtime. The old Buzzsaw Falls section is underbanked, so you get wicked laterals. And the finale, while a bit awkward, still manages to deliver some airtime and a forceful helix. Number 2, Time Traveler. The Prototype Mach Extreme Spinning Coaster is an absolute delight. Make sure to ride in the back car so you can experience that vertical drop out of the station to its fullest. Sideways and backwards ejector airtime is heavenly. The rest of the layout features some fun and disorienting inversions, plus a few additional airtime moments. Some of the turns are just okay, but most of the elements deliver and the ride is super rideable because of the smoothness and variability. And coming in number one is Outlaw Run. This is not only Silver Dollar City's best attraction, but it is one of my favorite coasters in the world. The original RMC Wood Coaster has one of the best drops, plus impeccable pacing. Outlaw Run rips through the entire layout, constantly ejecting you from your seat. The only time you slow down is during the final barrel roll, when it's advantageous to cause hang time. The elements are special on their own, but the ride also has an elite setting in the woods, and there is zero light on the course for the night rides. 
So those are the best 20 rides and attractions I've experienced in Branson. What are your favorite rides and attractions at Silver Dollar City and the surrounding area? Let me know down in the comments. And before concluding this video, I want to note that Silver Dollar City also has some of the best food of any theme park. And just a short drive north of Branson is my favorite restaurant anywhere in Lambert's. This place serves massive amounts of delicious food, and if you raise your hand, they'll literally chuck a piping hot roll at you from across the restaurant. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.